We're back, people, and today we're breaking off film on Curtis Bolton, Miami Dolphins linebacker, number 58 right here, and I think he's been, like, the biggest surprise so far of this preseason. Like, he's really, really showed up and made a lot of big plays, and, like, he was brought in just, like, as a camp body. There were some injuries at the position, uh, just, you know, have a body that can play in training camp and the preseason, and he's taken advantage of every opportunity. It's been super impressive to watching him play with instincts, pretty good athleticism. He's not the biggest guy. But he's just been out there making plays, getting around the ball. Definitely become a Bolton fan. He's now given himself a chance to make this roster. Like, looking at this first play, this is the kind of stuff that I look at for linebackers that I think goes underrated. Like, it doesn't seem like any sort of, like, crazy play at first glance. But I think this is kind of what separates yourself. Uh, this gives, I think, you know, Tyndall has the athleticism over him. But this is where Bolton can take that spot over him if he really wants to. This being sort of, like, his primary gap right here. This A gap, he's going up to fill into it. But this is just anticipation. Look at him starts to slow down and feel this coming. Like he can then scrape over the top. This is pure instincts, anticipation. And he is feeling this cutback lane coming. He feels like his defensive lineman flowing down, going to take control of that. So he starts to slow it down, work through this trash, predict that this guy's going to go over this hole. He's staying square. He shuffles, gets lateral, and then meets the guy at the line of scrimmage. That is perfect, like textbook, patient play where you're responsible for multiple gaps, playing within your run fit, and just making a very, very good play, and doing it while staying square, active with your lower half, being able to change directions. Beautiful, beautiful work. This is the kind of linebacker play that I love to see. Guys that play like that, they don't just have to have one gap, be a downhill, sort of see it and go type player. They're able to stack, they're able to track these guys, anticipate, that's high level work. Bolton, here's another example of hit doing similar thing this time from the opposite side being in control like this a gap his primary gap secondary gap to this side he's working off like this double team right here uh he starts to fill up into this hole show that shoulder right there but he knows if he shows right there that this running back is probably going to come back to here so he's kind of just baiting him into this and then once he starts to see him commit boom get over the top track it beautifully that is like ideal linebacker play versus the run in my opinion that's really where a lot of guys struggle because that's like a very nuanced sort of like a lot of detail within that play but bolton shows off some pretty good stuff here he is showing off some range i think he's a pretty good athlete like he's not i think that's the reason you know, see him like on you know he was like a free pickup he was he's not the biggest guy he's not the most athletic but he flies around the field gets involved and i think he's just improved from the last time he's played like instincts wise because instincts weren't a big uh, strength of his coming out of oklahoma uh, but here able to get down to the sideline recognize the flow outside zone from shotgun doesn't like overcommit either because you're like you're placed out here but you want to kind of stay in phase with the running back now he's kind of like even in with him once he like allows him to catch up now boom open your hips get down to the sideline make that tackle bolton continuously just making plays uh here he draws the holding penalty uh trying to shoot downhill this is also nice to see you got to be able to have be able to win in multiple different ways uh instead of just you know playing it slow stacking and tracking he feels this double team happen and this space open up that this right tackle is going to be late to where he is. So he just decides to shoot this gap. Like you have to be able to have good decision making, understanding when to shoot, when to, when to you know, play a little more patient. So he feels that space open, shoots downhill, uh, starts to bend underneath this, try to make a play, uh, and then just gets wrapped up and held. Had a chance to make that tackle at the line of scrimmage if he didn't, but he both draws the holding penalty. Really nice to see. Here he is versus screen, just recognize. Good feel for that. Avoid the, the lineman out in space. Dip, rip underneath. You can see it from this angle a little bit better. I wouldn't say he's like, you know, the most instinctual linebacker. Like, because I do think there are times where he could be a little more consistent. But he clearly shows a great feel. Especially versus the inside runs when he's working like multiple gaps. Uh, versus the screen here. Pretty good processing of it overall though. Uh, gets out there on space. A decent enough lateral range to get out there. The tackle kind of has an angle on him, but he's able to, you know, dip underneath, reduce his surface area, work through contact. I think he does a pretty good job, even though he, he is undersized, uh, playing with pretty good play strength, which is nice. Always nice for a linebacker being able to get off some blocks uh, when you have that undersized problem, because that's usually where it can be. But he's just making plays out on the perimeter. They try to throw the screen again. He's also been the communicator. He's been the guy when he is out there. Uh, he's been getting more and more playing time, too, getting in earlier in the games. Uh, he was the first one in when David Long got injured in this game. Uh, and then they throw the screen kind of even, you know, not even perfectly ready because he's kind of communicating, but then he just gets downhill, makes a play, a uh, good angle adjustment, good job uh, staying patient. He does a pretty good job tackling all those types of things. And then as a guy in coverage, like here we get to see him just work from the backside of a screen, just chase this down, 
doesn't want to overcommit. Like, he stays pretty patient as a tackler, so he can uh, be an open field guy. But uh, we'll get some of the other coverage. But I don't think, like, he's going to ever be, like, a super standout. He's not going to be, like, a big man cover guy. I think he can do some spot drop, read, and then just be in the right position. Uh, not going to be, like, the biggest impact there. But I think he can understand, like, his role or responsibility and do his job to at least, like, an average level. Here's a play down within the red zone. And this is just great feel. Uh, things get all clustered. He's kind of in this area where he might shoot downhill. But then it gets all clustered. He feels this space opening up. Like, this is just a natural feel for the game. He gets a lateral jump cut gets downhill that he fills up into this, replaces these defensive linemen. Good job by Leonard Payne also getting the hit, but Bolton right there also to make a play to help for that tackle of loss. Just great, great field. This is just uh, playing very, very quickly. Great instincts. This is just pure instincts. Things don't go exactly as planned. He just replaces the defensive lineman instantly and gets into the backfield to help uh, Payne make that tackle. And then here's some of the stuff in coverage. I think he does a decent, like, this is a third and long, or like a second and 12 situation here. He just drops into coverage, plays his depth, sees that he might throw underneath, and then close, get downhill, make the tackle. It only goes for about four yards, becomes a third and eight. So, like, you, you do your job, you understand it. Uh, he'll make those tackles on those underneath throws, and then he'll, like, help take away some throwing lanes. But he's not going to be, like, the super impact where he can make uh, cover a lot of range in those areas when he's playing on the back end, uh, but he will go out there. Do a very solid job for the run, whether he's on the backside or run on outside zone. He has enough range to play as like the will in these types of situation. Beat a lineman to the point of attack. Take pretty good angles. Make tackles near the line of scrimmage. Also does a good job for inside zone or can play uh, from things play side. This is what I'm kind of talking about with him in coverage. Like just when he's playing as your hook defender, he's dropping. He has a decent enough feel for route concepts to like, and then play with good with, with good eyes. Then get in those throwing lanes. Not give him like these free completions. To at least do it on like that first sort of route. And then he'll see the second route where he can come back underneath. He sees Daniel start to open up. Potentially, you know, look, show some pretty good fluidity there. Like obviously it's going to a different part of the field. Take away that first part. Open your hips. Get back on the other hand. Then change directions. Looks pretty fluid there. I think good enough in coverage where it, if he does make the roster, you're not like super worried. Like, And for me, Bolin has one of those chances to stick around. Because he's been making more and more plays in preseason and in training camp. He's been reported to make a lot of plays. Uh... He's one of those guys that even if he does get cut, I think he has a decent chance of making the practice squad. So I do expect Bolton to stick around on this team. Uh, he just seems like a pretty solid player. Here he is, you know, potentially showing blitz pre-snap. He actually wasn't that bad of a blitzer. Get off the ball. This is like where all the receivers are to this side. There's only a single receiver over here. He's able to locate the new number three. This The receiver two ends up running that crosser. He locates him, finds it, closes it underneath. Got to be able to find those crossers. That's a big deal. Ball goes somewhere else, but Bolton just in the correct spot again versus the pass. Another similar play on outside zone. The lineman loses balance. He like trips over, but he's still able to get to the point. He is willing to take him on. The lineman just kind of takes himself out of the play, but then still be in the right spot near the line of scrimmage is Bolton over and over and over again. He was just making plays. This is another example of him just like replacing a gap. He kind of shoots downhill. Uh, he shows himself in this gap, but he's anticipating the cutback. Like he, this is just a great feel for the game. This is like what David Long does a lot of. Sometimes you shoot downhill, you start to feel that this guy's going to cut back. This guy just got the ball, and he's already anticipating this cutback. He's not going to hit up to this lane, and he does. He scrapes over the top. Uh, these two are also there. Bolton just kind of gets tripped up on an alignment, but he was in the correct spot to make a play again. Like Bolton just continuously doing that stuff. Getting in the throwing lane. Again, making the throw. Like it's play action. Kind of gets sucked down a little bit, but then gets back, try to gain some depth. Get your hands up. Make this throw as high as possible so it's just a tougher completion. Like, he could have played this better, but even though, like, he gets sucked down a little too much, he's able to at least stay in that throwing lane, make the throw and catch as difficult as he possibly could from the situation that he was in. Like, there's enough there, I think, in coverage to be fine. As you can see, he does a good job when he's dropping as that hook. To, like, this three-receiver side, three-by-one side, he can take away a throwing lane. Like, he feels... Like, look at this feel. That, like, this is some pretty good feel for the play. Like, he looks back. Like, as he's peeking initially here, if you look at him, he starts to peek. Nothing is really thrown to the inside yet. So he knows from this situation, if nothing's really broken to the inside, like, one of these guys uh, of these two will start to break to the inside, gets his eyes back to the quarterback, and then starts to slightly drift to the inside, take away that initial throwing lane. That's just really good feel for route concepts. And then by, by the time that would happen anyways, he's getting sacked. 
uh, just being in the way of throwing lanes. Bolton is a pretty, pretty smart player. Here's like, this is one of Patrick McMorris' big play, but Bolton was also in the correct spot uh, where he's just tracking through the trash. Again, just great feel. Dolphins come out, you know, four down linemen, the outside linebacker, you know, standing up. He's basically, you know, they're like in like a, a four, like a four two, but the linebacker is even like out to the buck. He's just head up over the center, basically responsible for making a lot of plays here versus the run. Uh, they kind of start to down block. He's staying patient, staying square. Boom, get lateral, avoid the block from the tight end, show some core strength to work through that contact. And if McMorris wasn't flying down hill to make this play, Bolin would have been in the spot to also make that play basically a yard down the field. Like Bolin just continuously was doing that type of stuff over and over and over again. This was a third and long. He's gaining a lot of depth. He, he stays in the throwing lane of the tight end. Once he sees the running back start to cross face, and like then he would become responsible for it. As it crosses face of Tyndall would come into his zone. Uh, and he starts to see the quarterback pull the trigger. He's already breaking on it. Go downhill. Ball gets overthrown anyways. Almost in the spot to get the pick. Uh, but that was the third and long where he stayed in the throwing lane of the, the tight end. Then three to his side of the field. And then find the running back uh, where he would have been in the spot to potentially make a tackle. Definitely short of the gain. And then as a blitzer, he hasn't been that bad. Like here you get to see at least, you know, a decent rep. One on one versus center. Center slides to his side. He's able to, you know, hit a hard, you know, club move right there. Get arm over. Pretty good hand placement. And then even show off some bend to get to the quarterback. Like, that's a pretty good pass rush rep. He ends up kind of slipping and going past the quarterback. But he gets the initial pressure, forces him up into the other guys. And uh, I think, yeah, the quarterback was, like, forced to throw it away. Not a not a bad play there. But, yeah, Bolton pretty much all around has made plays in a variety of different ways. In different First, different, different run concepts. Doing it, whether he needs to stack and track, get to a different gap, or just shoot downhill. He's made some plays as a blitzer done enough in coverage where I'm like okay he's at least can do some solid things in coverage nothing that's super wowed me but uh with the running with him versus the run like I feel like oh he can do some stuff as a depth player and then also going out making plays versus screens to the perimeters and stuff like that Curtis Bolton has been uh, a welcome surprise one of the guys I just didn't expect didn't know really anything about before playing time I you know a lot of these other guys I've seen play whether it was coming out of college or just you know They've been in the NFL for a while, and they've had a lot of significant snaps. Bolin has been in the NFL for like four years or something like that, but hasn't played a ton of snaps, so this was nice to see. Uh, good for him. He's at least, if he doesn't make the Dolphins roster, and like uh, he's at least proven himself that he belongs uh, as a player, and I think could go somewhere else. So shout out Curtis Bolin. Uh, if you guys are the video, make sure that comes up. And that's the